Hey folks, welcome back. Uh, this is Lucid. I'm here with Sakne. Hello, everybody. And uh, we're back at you with uh, another turn in our new player game, which we are casting. It is uh, turn eight, and uh, things are about to start heating up. We've got a few bumps. I think last uh, last episode we had our first bumps, and uh, more to come. And so far we've had uh, one awake expander casualty. That's right. I think it was uh, our only awake expander. That's true. Our only awake expander did not make it past turn seven, unfortunately. Yes. Uh, and we've had a few nations, uh, well, let's be honest, struggle. Yeah. Um, and uh, But a handful of other nations, I think they got off to a really slow start, but they're finally starting to pick things up. So Yeah. Uh, where do you want to start? I guess we're, you're looking at Gath, so we can start there. Yeah, let's do that. Because we finished on Gath. So last turn, Gath lost a few of his strangely blessed Gibors to a big heavy cavalry charge. Uh, now he's just got an infantry, so... Now as a reminder, Gibber is... Uh, Gibber, um, Gath is kind of screwed this game because they didn't start in a wasteland. And there are no wastelands at all near him, so he cannot summon his sacred units, his, uh, oh. uh, the Seir. You know what's the worst part of the Bless? Seir is size 3, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, I mentioned, I, we talked about this, I think, oh, in the okay. first episode. But yes, exactly. That's, yeah. I, that's another oh, reason why I think man. it's so bad. Like, it's bad yeah. on a lot of levels. That's really bad. Because not in my opinion. going from 1 Seir, or 2 Seir per square to 1 is really rough. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so anyway, they're successful here. Um, over here, who is this? This is Ulm. Okay, so it looks like okay, Ulm's... Let's move over to Ulm, yeah. This is their first expansion party, and it looks like they oh, have no. finally met their match. Well, honestly, they did very well. Yeah. yeah they, that's all you can expect. This single army without reinforcements, I think, has gotten every single Ulm province. <laughs> I think that's true. Well, except for the, uh, they true. finally got one with their cavalry this turn. Okay. But except for that one, that is actually true. <laughs> now, I'm hoping for just hero knights that charge back and get up in the crossbow's face. And that is the only remote chance that they could win this. These guys are all limped and crippled up, so they're not, uh, oh, geez, they're yeah. effectively I'm not present. Five afflictions. All right. Do it, cavalry. Okay, the blood surge is on them. It's now a race against the clock. Can the cavalry get the commanders before these guys who are all surrounded get uh, butchered? Uh-oh, the infantry is des destroyed. Oh, there goes their commander. Oh, now they have to fight their way back. Oh, but he's so fast. Yeah. Minus five HP. Okay. Well, they did. They did all you could ask for. No. Uh, to his northwest, he expanded with that Black Templar army. Oh, and this is a second one. I saw this seven. This is like a second saying. one. Yeah. yeah okay. And it looks like these were Hobergs. Yeah. Oh no. Oh no. I don't know why I saw... I thought I saw a Hoberg somewhere on the UI. Well... Oh no, because it's uh, the Hawkmeister is the name of the commander. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Well, right. interestingly, I'm going to skip around. We're going to go south because we see a failed expansion here with Utgard. And th we were speculating on what we would do if we were Utgard in the last episode. Would we attack this province or not? And my but inclination was no, because yeah. these heavy cav are going to crush you. And especially if you don't have, like, a unified wall. Yeah, this was, I think, a poor... Uh, well, maybe he had a very optimistic scouting report, but three Gamhardings and four Jordan Javelinists are not enough to take... No. Uh, a lot of heavy cav. Yeah. It was a bad idea to come here, and it's made worse by the formation and all that business. They might barely could have taken it, 
if they made contact with the enemy all at the same time. But I think that's pretty... Yeah, the uh, drone javelinists are not really chaff that you want to throw out in front to eat uh, cavalry charges. You just have them with your with your gam hurtings, and they just yeah. go in together. The huskos, maybe. Um, uh, okay. So anyway, if what's interesting, why I wanted to skip down here, um, is if Ulm sees this, then, like, if Ulm scouted that and knew that happened, then it's just like auto attack here. Yeah, I agree. Um, we'll, we'll come back to Utgard and watch the rest yeah, of his. We don't know where Alm puts his scouts, which is right. you know, an issue here. Um, but, you know, Alm is actually in a tricky position now. So this army that you've got selected now has to go back east. We'll take right? this, yeah. There's nowhere else to go. And then, the, so yeah, there's nothing did... for this army to do except come down here and take this. So either he clearly intended to do that. Otherwise, why did he move that army west? Right, that army could have gone east, right. and like those Templars that are now, right, they should have gone east to keep expanding in that direction. Right. Uh, yeah, you're so right. this would imply he's intending to attack. Yeah, we'll have to see next turn if that's what he does. But but then that is weird to me too because he had the exact same army composition there last turn. So. Why did he feel? Why does he feel now he's ready to attack? But last turn he wasn't ready to attack. Did he think uh, yeah, a guard was going to patrol with his dudes? Right. Yeah, maybe he was going to see if the game hurting stayed, and if they moved out, he knew it would be safe to attack. I don't know. All right, we'll see next turn. But yeah, that's weird because he he definitely this is like his last open border, and so he really needs to get his ass out here. Yeah. To, to the east. Uh, Agartha, or or south actually, we should point out. He if he goes south, he should have moved southeast from his oh, capital yeah. into the forest, and then south into that plains. But yeah, him getting this, and then coming down and getting this, and then getting this. Ooh. But it, what I'm saying is, he could go from the east, right? He he, he should have moved southeast into the forest from his cap with those sacred knights, and yeah. then. And, and then gone south this. to turn after. This yeah. is hard, though. Heavy infantry and crossbowmen, you, that's the one thing you don't really want to march your... Like, your sacred calf into? Yeah, it's yeah. going to take them a while to chew through the heavy infantry, and then the crossbowmen are just going to pincushion them. So, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, maybe... You could do it, but you pro I think you need probably like 10 Templar. Just so you kill things fast enough, you know? Yeah, although it's mostly light infantry. You'd have to get heavy on the on the morale. Well, and then also, you're going to have fatigue issues with five against this many. So, mm -hmm. um, Well, let's see next turn if he attacks yeah. uh, Utgard. Meanwhile... So, Gartha just slaughters these endies here. This is uh, it's kind of a mix of different guys, but not a lot of... I think this... Yeah, this is like the original expansion army with a few friends. Yeah. Uh, and then the cave drakes, where are they? They're out here, I guess. They're out right here. I thought there were more than... Oh, no. This is that squad. He lost... Yeah, he lost a few. He, he fought heavy calves last turn. I don't think they died. I think they just turned into these guys. Oh, yeah. You're right. You're right. Only three yeah. turned into... Uh, yeah. Are these archers just hitting their archers? Every time. Yeah. I think if you have this many cave drakes, you just give up on your... You don't even need the archers. Like, don't, don't bring them with. Like, save these but, archers for an expansion party where they're going to do something. Yeah. This many cave drakes just going to kill everything. Maybe you need something to kind of... I don't think so. Two, especially with two Catonian reanimators. They're going to... If anything gets past the cave drakes, the undead spam will probably... Well, you just hold attack closest on the cave drakes. Yeah. Like, yeah. they'll just get anything. Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. Uh, but Agartha is starting to look pretty good. I mean, they've been going two expansion parties a turn for quite a few turns now. Yeah. Um, you know, ideally, now here it's tricky because this is a, a pretty tight map. Um, but you, you know, when you're practicing expansion, you should, like in single player, you know, you should try to get to three expansion parties per turn. Even a nation that's really bad at expansion should be aiming to do that by the fall or winter at the latest. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously some, like you said, like Lemuria could be doing like, 
you know, console every turn or whatever. So that's a weird exception. That's but most trend. nations, um, you know, you got to be able... I guess, let me put it this way. Once you've cleared your cap circle, you should be able to put out an expansion party in two turns of cap recruitment. Yeah. Uh, but getting so, to that point where you've cleared your cap circle is a pretty important milestone, which people have been struggling with here, so... Yes, that's uh, true. Things. And and in a map like this, you have to balance, like, do I go for my cap circle first, or do I stake out my territory, you know, in those border provinces? Yeah. Uh, so Joman here is... Uh, he's losing some Sohays, but it's Joman, so his sacreds aren't that good. Well, so this is a pretty efficient battle, because he's outnumbered 2 to 1. Let's watch this. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, his heavy cav goes right into heavy infantry. Or does it? Is it going to sneak by? No, oh, it's going to sneak by and get the oh, oh, commanders. Bastards. So that's why he takes so many casualties, because he's fighting a huge blob of heavy infantry. Yeah. That militia just gets yo-yoed. That may not be bad. I mean, this is as well as it could have gone, I think. Yeah, I agree. Went perfectly well for the cavalry. Uh, these guys get cut up. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty good. Yep, can't really complain, honestly, I think, okay. as German. I think I was... I went well. Okay. Uh, do we have any more? No. We have German moving this force south with the Son of the Dragon King. Cavalry. This is a... Must be a hero, right? Yeah, it's a hero. I, there's one of the heroes that gives you amphibious, like, or water breathing. I don't know if that's this, but... So this is a weird move out because from that province, he can only attack that cap circle oh, province here. to his northeast. Or the troglodytes, and that's for sure not going to kill troglodytes. Right. So why did he move south? Like, that doesn't really yeah, make sense to me. Yeah, it doesn't really make a ton of sense. Uh, now, if it's... Ashiguras? I don't know what those are. What's Ashigura? Oh, God, help me. Oh, these guys. Oh, the Yaris, the cheap yeah. chaff pikemen. Okay, because I was going to say, he potentially, if they're really high map move, he could, like, charge down here. But I don't think he has enough to kill to kill real heavy calf. Anyway. And that's really far from his cap. Yeah. Like, that's into Satis's land. Yeah, it's kind of picking a fight. Yeah, so I'm not sure. We'll see next turn. I'm not quite sure what why that move like that doesn't make a lot of sense to me i think he's i think this guy I, I think he's aquatic or like gives water breathing i think he's gonna make a play for this is my guess so why but then why not go west oh. of his cap to go into the lake you know well probably because this is an easier foothold than that but i guess he could you know no tritons are tough the, this is the easiest water in all there. right yeah maybe okay. i don't know maybe yes. yeah okay so that's it for this row i think Okay, coming down, we'll go to Satis. Uh, so there's a bump here again. This is the second bump between Satis and Raga, right? Oh, this is a zinger. This and is the other so thing hard. that's yeah, shitty about Assassin's Yeah, he worked so hard on, on assassinating these guys. And, and Raga's yeah. like, oh, look, nobody's here. Yeah, this is what goes back to, again, what I said with Assassin expansion, good for a few provinces early. But after that, it's not as good. And this is the other reason it can bite you in the ass. It's because you do the work and somebody else clears it out. So, um, you know, the later the turns go, the less ex assassin expansion works. So I think a lot of times if you do it, you want to get like one or two assassin squads and then switch to Unless you're else. doing it like for backfilling. Like you could clear your cap circle with assassin. Yeah, yeah that's true. Uh, okay, so Satis didn't even have another... Because he was moving his army across there to the north. I guess he's going to try to take those uh, heavy cav right. next turn. But and... he's not in... He He's probably feeling really bad because he lost the bump. You know, this assassin expansion didn't work. So he's probably feeling shitty. But he's still not in the worst position. Like, he's still doing better than... Like, he probably has the same province count as Abyssia. 
just about. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's only one less than Abyssia. So, and then Jomen, yeah. he's actually more than. Jomen's only <laughs> five. No, six. I so he's so. he's one more than Jomen and one less than Abyssia. That's not, you know, that's I think that's one thing in multiplayer games. Sometimes you just get totally worked up about how bad your situation is. And sometimes it's actually not that much worse than your neighbors. Than your neighbors, yeah. It just didn't okay. go like a single player test. So speaking of Raga, so Raga was expecting to fight a bunch of dudes. Uh, he pings a throne. Oh, let's take, well, we could take a look at that throne actually. If well, it's we can tell from here. It's just uh, so, sorcerers and wizards. Well, I guess it's worth seeing with the wizards. Well, we, we should just mention that it, it is a good thing to ping thrones because uh, the main thing you need to check is what type of wizard it is so you know if it's going to be summoning elementals and if so, what kind yeah. of elementals. And these are really so shitty. This, this is an easy throne because... Yeah. Uh, so the nasty thrones are if you have wizards with like high fire paths yeah. or maybe high air paths. But like low fire paths is not an issue or low water paths is not an issue. So this is a throne he can take pretty easily. Okay, so the, the Zayadins are stomping through Indies. You know, you can still lose Zidane parties with people that are going to run past the Zidanes and kill your commander. So for that reason, would you not go hold an attack closest? Well, that would kind of fix I, it. I, I I wonder, because that also prolongs it. If you ha hold an attack rear and kill all the commanders, then it ends sooner. So I'm not sure which is which is best here. Well, it's a, it's a race against time, so they just got the commander, so it's fine. But if they didn't, yeah. like if they ran into something else, these guys could get back and kill it. So, uh, And I don't know if having one bodyguard on this guy is going to make much of a difference, but... I feel kind of like what we were talking about. Having like a smaller group of chaff on a, like a screen, maybe like 10 guys plus two Zidanes. Like just infantry. I don't know. What what is it? What does uh, Raga have? What would that be? Oh, they've got it. Let's take a look. They've got like just human chaff. They've got these idiots, which I mean, these have chaff written all over them in like five different languages. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then uh, these guys, which are way more resources, but um, and these guys are pretty low morale. These guys are better, so I don't know. Like, and they these guys have javelins, which Zidanes have shields, right? Yeah, they have a shield and twenty protection. So I feel like you're pretty safe using javelins. So maybe maybe like ten of these guys and the Zidan. Well, uh, now like the thing Zidanes. is because. Because the Zayadins, like, the reason you would be getting these is the idea is that you could get expansion parties out quicker by having fewer of the sacreds. Right. If you're pumping all your resources into your chaff, then it's like, well, we should just be getting more Zayadins out, right? Yeah, that's probably true. So 60, I think you actually would then go with the, the real shit dudes like these guys. Yeah, yeah, I think you should do shit dudes, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Okay. All right, so Raga, kind of a spaghetti expansion still. He hasn't figured out how he's going to take out the uh, Crystal Amazons yet. Uh, yeah, those things are really kind of... And then this resource-rich farmland, or forest, is still... Yeah, this inexplicable... Invading him. <laughs> yeah, I think... God, I just think elephants, man. Elephant yeah. expansion. How much are elephants? They're pretty expensive. Okay, so they're basically the same cost as as a Zidane. They're the same. They're just gold. They're a bit cheaper. And they're gonna. I don't know who's more killy. I mean, elephants kill a lot of stuff really fast too. I don't know, but I think having more chaff and then two two of your killy units is probably better. You can pick. Worth testing. Worth testing. Okay. Uh... Utgard, uh, two expansions. So we, we already talked about this failed one up here. Yeah, so he was going for three. Um, oh, taking, God, he just, taking bosses against a heavy cav. Yeah, he just is a magnet for heavy cav. Now, you know, to be fair, so we... 
I think we we have weird like we're talking about this Utgard as though he's because he's using Gam Hardings. So we're like assuming he's using Gam Hardings with some kind of bless, and that's why we think he's doing such a bad job every time he loses them. But it's important to remind her that he actually has no bless on these Gam Hardings. Right. Effectively no bless. Um, effectively no bless. I mean, later he'll have regen, but right now he has no bless on them. Right. So it is a bit of a weird situation. He's ex he's recruiting them because he wants a big pile of them after his regen comes online. But, oh man. <laughs> But so then he's stuck expanding with them, and they don't oh, really have no. a bless. <laughs> oh, they route. Oh my what god. What a badass. <laughs> oh man, that's like shit your britches right there. Four heavy cab. Oh, he's all afflicted too. Oh man. That, that was really close. They, he was very close to losing this outright. Yeah. So, like, these fights, he's taking casualties, but honestly, yes, maybe sometimes he could improve the scripting, but just if he actually had a real bless on his dudes, it would help a lot. Okay, I think um, if you're going to go for this, I think the gam hurtings were a mistake. Like, okay, let's compare these. Nine resources, but 28 recruitment points. So, recruitment points is probably going to be your constraining resource. Or, or, or gold, honestly. They're so expensive. <laughs> right. So, nine compared to 28 so you can get basically three of these i feel like in most circumstances you want to have three of these guys versus this because i mean the javelin volley and then they're gonna so, smack your yeah max. i i think this is i think it's just an awkward build yeah. because i understand why he's getting them now because he took regen on them so he's thinking i'll build up a pile of them so i can have a year one war with them with regen and if you if you're thinking like if you've got a dormant bless that's going to come online, then I understand you you want to recruit them, but then because if you spend all your money recruiting other units for expansion, then it's like it's a little counter synergistic. So I get it, but then it means you're forced to use sacreds with no bless, and sacreds with no bless are just going to be inferior to whatever. Like some well, you just pointed out a great alternative, right? Yeah. If your sacreds have no bless, then you probably shouldn't be using them. Yeah, yeah. You're paying like, you know, you're paying extra money for the holy tag. If you're not going to use it, then you might as well do something else. Yeah, I didn't think I would, and I, you know, I, who knows what I said in the first couple episodes? Because maybe I was like, oh, game hurtings can do good without a bless, but I think we're seeing they really can't. I mean, they do fine, but yeah, when, they do fine. But so that's but the thing. you can't run them into heavy cab like this. You need yeah. you need more bulk like you need I now actually you know what I would I think what might be better in this case is uh no I would go gam hardings but in cuz he's recruiting a uh, Jotun javelinists as his chaff yeah. um and if he's fighting this much heavy cav then he should be recruiting the humans as his chaff and just having them die to the heavy cav and then have his sacreds that aren't really sacreds come and kill the heavy cap from the sides but yeah go recruit the huskarls maybe these are okay i don't know i think you'd have to tinker I, with it but the huskarls might be I the think thing. These are great units i think this yeah. is a great unit yeah but you can't recruit this and gam hurtings so i think you do gam hurtings plus the little humans maybe also then the also then importantly the little humans fit between the, the squares so yeah. You have a bunch of those guys. Maybe this I, is the thing: is a mix of javelinists and huskarls, because the well, javelinists can take a hit. Like they're thirty HP, they're not going to die. They have better protection. They have a big old shield. Okay, I agree. I actually, I think that's a great expansion strategy. But I'm thinking, if your thinking is, I need to start recruiting my sacreds in year one, so I have a nice pile of them when my bless comes online. So, which yeah. I think is what this player is going for. Yeah, I I agree with you. If if yeah, if you do that, then you do this, and you do the the huskarls, and like if he was doing yeah. scales, yeah. scales Utgard, let's say, then yeah, huskarls and the javelinists, you don't even get the gam hurtings. I right. agree. And then, but if you're doing the gam hurtings, then you get the huskarls to fit in between the the gam hurtings. To fit in between, yeah. and because they're great, uh, dispendable, uh, expendable uh, people yeah. to take lance charges. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. 
But um, despite all that, he's actually doing very well. Yeah, this, he's at. We've been talking about how many provinces people are at. So he's at three, six, nine. He's at nine, which is the most of any nation we've counted so far. I think. How many is Raga at? We haven't counted Raga. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. So yeah, Utgard's so far in the lead. And his expansion pattern oh, is... he's at 10. I didn't count this one. Yeah, yeah. And his pattern is pretty good. Like, he has a, he still has a lot of more room to work with. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, he's doing fine. Oh, dude. Abyssia just getting wrecked by... Villains. The villains again. Dude, 6 PD. I swear, guys. All you need is 6 PD. Don't do 1 PD. Unless you're Lemuria. But... Well, you you put one PD in a province on a in a war that you think you're going to lose because well, you know, yeah. don't yeah, don't yeah. lose money. But yes, when you're expanding six PD, please. Do okay, it. he does take a wasteland down there. Okay. We thought this was going to slam into uh, oh, heavy cast, but he, he took a he detour. Chose not to. Yeah. Which is understandable. He needs chaff. Mm hmm. For the for this, and he doesn't have any. So, you know, ideally, we would have seen you know X amount of militia or something here yeah. but anyway um and then okay. yeah he loses that i think that's it because a z is that's dead. it for this but... row i think a Did Sittis Sittis? Got bumped. oh yes yeah, this got bumped here the assassin and these guys are coming over this way yeah um okay coming down atlantis, so atlantis is is working underwater but oh, they I went after the that... hard one this was a big part. Oh, this is yeah. like 60 guys on the... Okay, it's not actually that. Not sure. Yeah, well, still. Sanders. Are they at least 10? Six. Oh, that's really good, actually. And yeah. Well, that that was a... Uh, I mean, that's a good use of, of overwhelming force. Yeah. I just question... Like, this is not a priority right now, I right. think. Right? But it is a shit ton of income. 2,000... 24,000 population. Yeah. But, yeah, you could be getting this other stuff. I don't know. But, yeah, I don't know. It, it's a call. But uh, did he get... Where's it? I thought he had another force, or does he not? He doesn't. This was the only uh, Atlantis no. expansion, huh? Or it looks like he might have combined forces to take that. Oh, he might have. Yeah, I think you're right. Which yeah. he probably needed to, actually. I mean, in, in terms of ways to take that province, that was very well executed. Right. I just think there, there are other things he could be doing right now. Right. Well, he um, should be able to sail out now. Um, and, and hit this one. This one he really needs to hit, hopefully from his cap. But he's got his cap circle cleared for a while, so he's... Well, but even that one, like, that's not a priority. Nobody's going to take that from him, right? Yeah. He should be going... He needs to secure that region that's two away from his cap to the north and south. Uh, no and on, into the west. Yeah. Like everywhere, yeah. He just... <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah, all right. No uh, forts area. And we're getting to the point where people yeah. need to be getting forts up. We haven't really we been checking, first... but... Yeah. We'll do a province count on all these guys, too. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's at eight, so that's okay. He's... Middle of the pack. Lemuria. And yeah, pretty easy. I don't think there's anything to see. He had uh, lost in that province last turn. Right, but I think they but, killed... Uh, there's heavy he cap got, they yeah. killed, right? Or no? Oh, and he just lost a fair amount of ghosts. And that mm -hmm. had an HP route. <laughs> One of the things, too, about Lemuria is you want... Your Centurions are pretty tough. You actually... You don't want them to take, like, a ton of Lance Charges because they'll die. But you do want them attracting attention away from your Ghosts. Because otherwise the Ghost will HP route you. Yeah. So yeah. having them a little bit in front and center but not completely surrounded is, I think, the way to do it. Um, okay. Here... Nothing too special. Just a bunch of Ghosts. This is the Prophet, I believe. Prophet coming through. Bunch of heavy cap. We'll watch this. And crossbows. This is more what you expect from Lemuria, because I think he's going to take, like, four provinces this turn. Oh, man, he took a freaking hit in the chest. Oh, unequal to obesity, though. On a Prophet? Oh, man. 
That's so nice. Maximum yep. HP 40. Plus regen bless, right? So Yeah. You know, another thing about waiting to profit, and I didn't do this in my Lemuria game I'm playing, but if you wait, you can see what heroic traits all your centurions roll, and then if you want to, you can profitize the really good one. Hmm. But I, I think I'd still prefer having a holy four. Uh, did he bump over here? Oh, there was a bump. Okay, so Marignan has been... Uh, we talked about him, that he should try to take this province a while right. ago. Uh, he did a, it in reverse order. It's a high he, value one. Yeah, but he did it well, obviously. So a lot of crossbows. And he's got his sacreds here, which have magic weapons, which yep. will be very useful in a moment. <laughs> yep. I think it's the console that comes up here. Yes, you're right. He had a console left. Yeah, oh man. So Marignol sacreds are, I think, pretty average to mediocre sacreds and dominions in general. But with magic weapons, they're like designed to kill consoles, basically. <laughs> um, and also we should say like this number of crossbows. So expanding with archery units is tricky and often ill-advised. Yeah. But this is starting to get to a critical mass of crossbows, which is similar to what Ulm might you know, end up with with rangers, where you actually just can expand with crossbows. Yeah, you really need to be getting like four, like thirty. I think is the starting point for the yeah. crossbow expansion. And then you need some unit in front. There wasn't a lot of friendly fire either in this one, which I was a little surprised at. Mhm. Mm okay. All right, and then. The bump. Let's take a look at this guy. Heroic trade already. Heroic quickness, too. That's such a good one. That's like the one of the best ones. Yeah. All right, so his bless is uh, regen and awe. And the awe is going to be pretty helpful, but versus sacreds, they tend to have pretty high morale when they're blessed. So yeah, uh, it's not going to be super effective. Six HP. Yeah, he just mute. got Ooh. chopped up. Crossbows too. Rip. I mean, you don't fault Lemuria because he would have taken it. Um, yeah, there was a lot. I mean, this is a good. It was a normal, solid move from Lemuria. But uh, he just. Uh, yeah. He's in the wrong place at the wrong time. So as Marignan, what do you do now? Do you, well, do, what do you do with this army? Well... Can you get into the forest? Uh, we can tell this has Lemuria's dominion in it, because it's cold. Um, so on one hand, you kind of want to... I mean, I don't know. I don't think you attack Lemuria this early. I mean, you did just kill his only dude over here, and you probably could take this. You've got this sure. army here, too. I'm not sure. You He has to break through up here. Getting this is the highest priority for him right now. Yeah, I agree. Or, like, even this. like, And then maybe getting this, too. Like, he has to get this stuff. So the question is, what can you do with this group? And if... If the squad in your capital you feel comfortable rolling out this way, then you do that. What does he have? That's another... Crossbow men in hands of justice. Yeah, yeah another... he's not going to be comfortable with these guys. Oh, he's recruited a bunch of barbs, or maybe those are mercs. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. He's recruited a bunch of barbs. So I guess he's going to go south with that, right? What's south? Yeah, I guess these barbs can probably take this. Militia and archers, though, I think... I can't remember if these guys have javelins. Mm. 
All right, well, we'll, yeah, we'll have to we'll see, see where he goes with that army next turn. But yeah, I mean, I, if you have nothing better for this army to do, then I, you can attack Lemuria and take the, the forest. I think you can take the forest. Like, because diplomatically, you don't want to... Like, this was a bump, so you have plausible deniability. And if you go for the forest, that was an in indie. So you feel, I think as, as Marignon, you feel comfortable bumping, right? Yeah. But, so I, you take the forest. But if you have magic weapons, like, yeah, I don't know. It's tricky. I, it, I, don't, I don't know how to handle it. And he doesn't know how big Lemuria is or anything. But I guess what I'm saying is you don't necessarily want to go to war, but you can take that contested yeah. indie, you know, those contested indie provinces safely from... Uh, before uh, before Lemuria goes for them. Yeah, that, that's fair. Uh, right. Okay. Bogarus. War Shamblers coming through. That's a coming. good move here. I didn't even think yeah. about that. War Shamblers going online, taking on Heavy Cav. Good, good, good matchup, actually. The good thing about this is he's blocking off Agartha from getting to these juicy farmlands because he's got this yes. throne here. I guess Agartha would have trouble. Oh, no, there's a bridge. So Agartha could have come up this way. Yeah, so good move there in terms of province yeah. movement. Now, he where know the Marignan's not in a position to take these, but so that you know this could be okay if he gets these, he's at least in the game. Now we say he's not in a position, but actually he should be. So if you're Bogarus, then your scout, like your initial scout, should be around those provinces somewhere. You need to be. This is a good use of scouts. <laughs> this is a good use of twenty-five gold is you know moving scouting through those provinces and once you've determined that they are still free scouting east into marignon and keeping an eye out on like what's going on there where are his armies yeah specifically um, when they're here and here exactly absolutely yeah. because as long as that gives you a timer that tells you like okay can i is it still worth it to invest three turns of army movement to go get those prairie provinces so it looks like he's moved, he's just spent this turn re, like, moving armies around, except for the Warshamblers. I guess yeah. he's trying to go north, right? Yeah, I think he's trying to bust out over here, so. This, you know, Foulspawn are going to die. This stuff over here is, like, pure trash. It's going to die. I don't think, there's an Etten. It's not a huge deal. It's not a huge deal, but the Bloodhenge Druids can do, agony, can do a lot of agony, yeah. Yeah, and so that's a bit of a thing. But Agony's has a range limit. So I've been, I, I mean, I've been in a situation before where I've had this province and I didn't really know what to expect in it. And I kind of held off on taking it too long. It's not that scary. You, you just do hold an attack, far back position as you can, let all their crap come at you. Yeah, so you fight, you have, you try to have most of the fight out of range right. of Agony. right. And then you finally charge in at the end, and you're going to take some losses, but it's not it's not horrible. So it makes sense to maybe save it, but yeah. Uh, Atlantis, we already covered them. So going south again. Did we cover? Oh no, we didn't. Uh, this is new. No. Um. Or did we cover it? Maybe we're done for this turn. Did we do German? Yeah, we yeah, did. We did. Guys, we did it. Well, it's yeah, it's been half. It's been over thirty minutes, which yeah. is about how long it takes us to do one of these turns. So, yeah. So, uh, what are you, what are your final thoughts on Sack? Who do you think's in the best position right now? Yeah, good question. Um, all right, I am liking. All right, let's take a look here. I'm kind of liking. I'm liking Utgard. Yeah. Uh, because I think. I mean, I think it's a bit of an awkward build, but he's kind of sticking to his plan, which is on, you know, on turn 12, when my monolith comes online, I'm going to have like 30 regenning gam hardings. Mm -hmm. And he, I like his position partly because of what he's done, but also just because of the luck of the draw on the map, like Raga has not at all expanded west. And Marignon has literally not even gone through his cap circle right. north. Yeah. So, and, and he, and, and the combination of that plus Utgard went north first and staked out territory in the Alms cap circle. 
So he still has provinces that he could take to his north, east, south, and west. Yeah. Right? Like, he's got so much more room still to expand. So, to me, that's got a lot of potential. Yeah, too, um, if he wasn't taking losses like this, too, like, if, I mean, if these parties had more longevity, there's yeah. so much fruit to take. I mean, like, this, you're right, it's just, he, ah, that's a really good point. There's just so much stuff he can take still. So, you know, he's got a lot of uh, potential. For the same reason, I think... Raga, although, you know, he has been playing cautiously, um, he, again, is fortunate that to his east is Satis, who's doing a very slow... Uh, so let's say both Raga and Satis are doing slow conservative expansion, except Raga is Raga, which is, like, a much stronger nation than Satis. So, you know, his elephant... So he's expanded well, going south, blocking off, claiming that territory from Lemuria, mm -hmm. then going deep into Satis... Now, he, all that land between him and Satis is his to claim. Plus, he's lucky enough that Gath is being very, very slow to his north. So he has a lot of land to his north to claim. Um, oh, this will be interesting if they bump here. Yeah. Yeah, that will be interesting. I think I think the, the Zaydans take it. Uh, I uh, actually, I think they're going to kill his commander is my guess. Oh, uh, could happen. Well, we'll, we'll have to see. We'll so anyway, so I, think, yeah. I think Raga has... He still has like a lot of land that he can claim, plus he's Raga. So as he claims that land, he is going to hit like that first year with a scary number of sacreds. Yeah. And, you know, it would be tragic if he goes and fights the Gamherdings, but if he chooses to fight any of his other weaker neighbors, I think he'd be in a great position. Yeah. Um, we've criticized Lemuria a bit, but, you know, He's arguably in a... Oh, he's the biggest, for sure. He's arguably in a good position, right? So there's nothing... One, two, three... We didn't count them, so let's count Lemuria. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 11, 12, 13, 14. And not only that, but Lemuria still also has a lot of comfortable room to expand west underwater to take those lakes. Yeah. Um, and east... See, like Atlantis, I would think, like Atlantis is still in an okay position because nobody else can contest these lakes. So even if he does nothing else on land, he's guaranteed to get all those underwater lakes. So that's good for him. I just feel that he could be in an even stronger position if instead of going underwater, he had staked out more, you know, more land, yeah, more land claims because he's going to get the water anyways. I feel, too, conflict must be brewing between... I mean, they may not choose to do it, but Atlantis and Joman being near each other, especially when they're near water systems, like, they both want the water so bad. Except so, Joman has done nothing in his build to get him underwater. Yeah. So, I... Like, I don't know what... Like, how is Joman planning to contest Atlantis for anything underwater? Yeah. Like, is he trying to intercept him on land before he can get underwater? You know? Yeah. I... So anyways, I, I guess those would be my, the nations I think are, are in the best positions currently. Um, honestly, the other nations are all kind of doing okay. Even, you know, Bogarus and Marignan have turned their absolute god-awful garbage starts with failed expansions and terrible positions. You know, well, they're this, both at like seven or eight yeah. provinces. Yeah. Uh, Bogorus is at a different level of bad start than... Like, Marignan has an, a non-optimal start. Yeah, no, Bogorus' start is absolutely god-awful. But, I mean, yeah. he's got those planes to the southeast that are still available yeah, to yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah, if he get, I wonder. Yeah, if he gets all these, he might get up to like twelve hundred income or something. That would be probably like a thousand, actually. Well, four hundred in his cap. You know, he could get up to like twelve hundred. That's not horrible. And you know, like for example, these two, like uh, if we look at like Agartha and Abyssia, two sort of medium, mediumly successful powers so far. There's a lot of land in between them still. What do you so, do if you're if you're Bogarus? Not in terms of like how you finish expansion out, but like how do you think about like where you need to be in twelve turns? All right, yeah, let's look at that. So looking at Bogarus, um, 
I think, geez, that's tough. Okay, let's look. Um, I think Atlantis is my long-term sort of existential threat. Yeah. Uh, because there's nothing I can do really to go underwater. Yeah. So diplomatically in this game, you need to do whatever you can to help Lemuria win its war against Atlantis, which seems inevitable. Uh, yeah. Maybe in a normal game, you'd reach out to Joman too and be like, hey, because you expect Joman to fight Atlantis, except in this case, Joman is also in a terrible position and has no under way to you know, fight underwater. Um, so, you know, you always, in a, in a typical multiplayer game, whoever is the neighbor of your neighbor, but is not also your direct neighbor, is going to be a natural ally. Like this guy. So, you know, Bulgarus should be talking to Joman uh, because either they would cooperate against Atlantis or against Agartha. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's pretty, pretty spot on. I think that you're also just a natural target to Atlantis because he wants to get to these. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, what do you think? A huge pile of Maldrazina backed up with a ton of Eparchs rolling up into Atlantis? Like, and t do you try to, like, rush his capital? Uh, no, well, because Atlantis is already underwater in the lake between you. Yeah, but so, if you can keep them out of their land forts, they have shit underwater troops. Yeah, so I would think in terms of tactics, I think you gotta go... I think you gotta go air elementals here, right? Hmm. I, I think because... Oh, uh, magic weapons? No, they're gonna get torn up, man. Oh, that's true. That's true. It's Atlantis is there. Well, okay, so... But because what do you have that's going to kill, you know, cold three ice guards? Uh, Eparchs with Maldrazina. Skip your mm. archers. Yeah, skip the archers. Um... So that that's a, th that's a thing. That's a possibility. The problem is to if you go all in on Eparchs, then you're going to have zero research until like turn 40. <laughs> well, uh, if you have in, in those, if you're going enough at parks to beat Atlantis. Um, but I'm trying, I mean, there's like playing not to lose and there's playing to win. And if you're trying to play to win as Atlanta, I mean, as Bogarus, like, wait, okay. When's the best right. timing to fight Atlantis? Yeah. I was going to say, that's actually early. what I was going to say. Yes. Early, but not right now. I think currently you oh, have no, to, no. Yeah. I think right now you have to go get those planes to the East. Oh yeah. 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 And you have to do that. that might involve fighting. You'd have to expect to be fighting Marignan for that, right? Um, like there might be some other conflict that's going to well, get in the way first. You don't want to fight Marignan for them, but it might happen. Yeah, I mean, you could maybe talk Marignan into peace because Marignan does not want you getting conquered by Atlantis because then this nightmare that it is then to be Atlantis continues, yeah, is going to be the nightmare that it is to be Marignan. Uh, that's a good point. So I think you can make friends with Marignan. Um, you're under, you're strangely, although it's a terrible start position, you have the benefit that your northern neighbor is never going to attack you because it's Abyssia, so he'll never get across right. the river. And nobody, that that's kind of, like, if you have a really, really bad start position, like, especially because you're near underwater, <laughs> yeah. nobody wants yours. <laughs> yeah, your exactly. Your stuff except, like, the underwater nations near you. But if you're like, no, you can keep that land. We don't want it. So yeah, I think you you do what you can to secure that farmland, and then you secure you do Diplo with Joman and Ulm, um, to make sure that you can either fight Agartha or Atlantis uh, one on one. Because the thing is, Atlant yeah, Atlantis is going to be a threat to you, but. The thing about when you play Atlantis and you border Lemuria, you're kind of like, oh, but I have to. I have to go kill Lemuria. Right. You know? Uh, and he's also bordering Joman to the south, and there's yes. this whole lake system to the south. So if I'm Bogarus, maybe what I'm hoping is that, yeah, Atlantis might get big, but I'm actually... Atlantis is going to be greedy. He's going to go get all the lakes, and then he's going to go be part of this anti-undead coalition, right? I think that's what I bank on. And then maybe I, uh, team up on 
I don't think you're a good matchup versus Agartha early. I could be wrong, but just uh, crossbow spam versus Bogarus, like having yes. shit troops. Ugh. Yeah, I agree. Well, how fast can you rush enchantment six as Bogarus? I mean, not very. I mean, not like. Here's the thing: when like, you're this small, yeah, you have to make an early can. game play. You can't sit around and be like, "Oh, I'll make a play at turn 30. Well, honestly, that's why I meant. I don't think you're 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 right. I don't think it's a good matchup. I think that's why you have to deploy. You have to do it with Alma yeah. or with Droman, right? Yeah. I think that's your that's your but, play. So that's a plan. Just like get away from the lake. I think you and can. Then... I think I would make the bet if I was if I was Bogarus. I would make the bet that I that Atlantis isn't going to rush me. Well, no, yeah, I don't think they are. I think they just kill you whenever it's convenient. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I I make that bet and I try to get because it. I mean, look, Atlantis is. See, I don't think Atlantis can kill Bogarus. Like in the early game, they're weak, but once Bogarus can get like its communions or whatever going, then on land. They'll do okay against Atlantis. It'll be a terrible war to fight because you're surrounded by underwater provinces. Yeah, and but, sailing, right? So, I mean, you just... And they, they can be right on top of your cap. And, like, from their cap, they go from here to here, and from here to here, and then to here to your cap. So they're three turns away, and yes, you don't even see it coming. You're right. also tiny, and so defending is actually very easy, right? <laughs> Well, if you're fighting purely defensive, right? But you know. well, but so in that scenario, right? This would be like a later, like I don't know, year three war, right? So ideally, you've secured some land to the southeast, those problem, those plains. Yeah. You've teamed up with Joman, maybe Ulm two to beat up on Agartha. So let's say right? that gives you just these three. But those three are that's that territory is pretty safe from Atlantis. Sure. And now you have a fruitful long-term cooperation with Joman, and you're like, all right, well, let's go deal with Atlantis, right? Uh, you know, like you no. keep that coalition going against the other neighbor. The thing is, that's actually not a great ally for this war, because if you think about it, you're going to be attacking from the same angle, and it's really awkward for you, like as Joman, I mean, as Bogarus, because like you're only really going to get this strip, and then they would have to come from here. You really need to court like a northern neighbor, like Satis or Raga or something. Yes, I, I'm, I'm. You're right. I'm not. Like I agree, it's not the best ally. Yeah, I mean, you would have to. Yeah. No matter who that player is in the German position, yeah, is the player you have to ally. Like, there's, <laughs> yeah. doesn't matter who the nation is. Like, you just yeah. that's that's your ally. Well, I think Satis is actually the key ally for these guys. Well, and Maria. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we know, yeah, that's that's another they, good point. They're not going to know that, but they, they, you know, you can figure well, that out by turn Well, no, they would know who, where the player is, but they wouldn't know in in what bad position Satis is. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's no way that Satis is going to be like, oh, yeah, sure, I can afford to go to war against yeah, that's true. Atlantis. Um, but but Boogers might not know that. Boogers might not know that Satis is actually kind of almost worse off than they are. Yeah, you know, I think if I were Bogarus, man, I think I would all in on Maldrazina and Eparchs and say either we're going to take somebody's cap. You know, I'd finish the expansion, but either we're going to take somebody's cap, maybe it's Agartha, maybe it's these guys, and yeah, do the diplomacy stuff. Or we're just going to fail. Because <laughs> if you can't do it, uh, you know, it's fine. But I, you can't sit around and be small. Especially when you have, I mean, it, not only would you be small, but you have this really horrible lake system matchup, which is going to be mid game troubles. Anyway. Yeah, it's a it's a rough. Uh, it's a rough one. It's a rough one. Okay. All right. Good luck to Boogaroos. Uh, and thank you all uh, for watching. Yeah, we'll see you guys with turn nine in the next episode. Take care.